I think it's easier if I do this. Can anybody hear? No. No. Can't hear? Can't hear? Can you hear? Okay. Other customers, I am to. First of all, uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, I am particularly pleased that uh, for the first time in my memory that I can remember, Ray is with us. And Dave, it's great that you brought it. Appreciate it. Um, a couple of guests tonight uh, uh, I would just like to introduce. Uh, number one. <laughs> On our list, uh, still with us, and, uh, and and I'm happy he's still with us. Uh, you know, I, I hate to I hate to have everybody go and have I'd have to start doing some of the work. But, uh, <laughs> Sir James, James, thank you. But anyway, I was really pleased when uh, when Janie was there when I came, and uh, uh, Janie, we had a lot of fun together, and I do have to. Uh, tell one little story about Janie. She was involved in this, but uh, uh, Janie also did a little moonlighting on the side, and she, uh, she was tending bar at a place called the, uh, I remember right, the Lamplighter. And uh, we, we had an inventory. I think we did inventory that night. Wasn't it inventory? Hilder was there, too. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, anyway, uh, uh, no, no, yeah. Uh, Gareth uh, Hagstrom uh, was working in our men's apartment with us, and, uh, and, a, and a real nice kid, you know, and nervous as hell kind of a kid, but uh, Janie's standing bar, and we're standing there talking. This is January, you know, so we're doing inventory, and we just finished, and we were down there, and Janie was standing bar, and, and Gareth and I were standing there talking, and then I got my jacket on, and and of course, I had nippings in my pocket, and so the pocket is sticking open. And Garrett's standing there, and he's just talking, and he's pouring this whole bottle of beer right in my pocket. And Jenny thought that was very funny. So did Garrett. But that was outside the store, right, Jenny? We didn't do that drinking in the store. Uh, back in those in those days, uh, also when I was when I was young, you know, they. Uh, uh, they delayed naming my successor until the day before I left because they did not want me corrupting him in any way, shape, or manner. But I came here a sweet, innocent kid, too, at, at 36, and I didn't know a thing. And uh, Hilder and uh, Adeline Arnold and a few others kept dragging me to this place called the Office Bar. <laughs> now, all of us remember the Office Bar? You know? Friday night. Yeah, Friday night, the whole gang would be at the Office Bar, and uh, Hilder was uh, holding court there. Hilder and, and you. Only at a penny party. <laughs> only at a penny party. Oh, yeah, only at a penny party, right? Uh, another real great surprise tonight, and I'm just so really tickled that he's here. Uh, good dear friend Jim Strand from the Ironwood uh, store uh, has retired this last. I have him here is Jerry. Jerry, thanks a million for coming. But, wouldn't dare, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and then back, uh, you know, uh, we, we've been really fortunate in our in our store. Uh, uh, we've had many, many long-time associates with many, many, many retirees. Uh, I, I couldn't even begin to, uh, if I started, I would miss some. Uh, some were able to come tonight, some just cannot make it anymore. We've gotten beautiful cards. Uh, uh, from some who couldn't get here tonight, but uh, with us tonight, Lorraine Kempinen. Lorraine, thanks a million for coming. <laughs> Little Hague told me one day, she says, I'm getting there you go. Uh, the next one sitting there, I don't know why she didn't bring her boyfriend along tonight, but uh, uh, Lois, I guess, just decided she was going to come alone, so <laughs> Lois Kerkleski, hey, how about a uh, little, there you go. 
Sam Birch. <laughs> he's, he's fishing for Birch? Oh, okay. All right. And Lil Buto. Lil, uh, well, Lil did, he just didn't go back to work anywhere else, but uh, good Lil, we, we get to see her every once in a while. She pops in to say hi. And uh, Lil, thank you. Is retiring three years now? Uh, it's going on two, okay. And um, uh, her poor hubby couldn't come, but uh, she brought her charming daughter along, and I think that's a lot better. Than, a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> so both of you stand up. Years. <laughs> yeah, where do I where, where do I start? You know, but. One day, um, uh, dear friend Phil Rushmeyer retired over at Ironwood, and uh, in comes this snotty nosed little kid, you know, and uh, I have to take care of him because Phil says, You're the closest one, and you got to take care of him. And, and for the first couple of years, every meeting I went to, we sat next to one another. They, I guess they were afraid to put him somewhere else or sure he'd get lost or whatever. And finally, I said to the powers that be, I said, I got to sit on the other end of the room. I don't want to be right there all the time. First of all, he kept jabbering all the time. He's, he's more talkative than I am. Anyway, uh, uh, Mar Marla, uh, his, his dear wife, Marla, uh, I really wanted her here tonight. She'd be a lot better uh, company and a much better companion to sit with. Uh, anyway, she sent her husband, uh, their little their little Chuck, uh, had a little Bronco uh, attack today and had, a, had some emergency uh, uh, work done. But uh, anyway, Ron Bankston, our manager at Ironwood. Okay, well, that takes care of all those. I said, all I can say, I don't have anything else to say, and I'm done for the night. <laughs> no, Sue? No. No. Okay. Uh, way back, um, again, I have to go way back. Uh, to the good days, Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Uh, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, a nice town there in Lake Winnebago. Uh, Lake Winnebago is, in, in, uh, in the Indian language, is land of stinking water, and it really is. Uh, Lake Winnebago, if you are familiar with it, it does smell. It, it's really lousy. Uh, right, Hilda? Yeah. Yeah, it does, it does have an odor to it. But anyway, uh, I, I spent time in Oshkosh, uh, and I got to know a young man there uh, that was one of my competitors, uh, the manager of the Johnson Hill store, uh, just a super guy, and uh, he and I would uh, meet quite often at the bank picking up our deposits, and uh, uh, Johnson Hills was in this huge remodeling program, and every day we would talk about how that was going, and everything was going fine, and then they had a robbery. Somebody broke in, and they stuck a bunch of mattresses against the safe and blew up the safe, and, and all this kind of stuff. So uh, uh, something happened at the bank, and we had to take our money to the uh, police station that night, and we couldn't go to the bank, and they put it in the police vault. Um, then one morning, this uh, fine young man, Joe, uh, said, uh, we finally got it done, Andy. Tonight's the big party. We're having a, uh, an employee's uh, night, and tomorrow comes the grand opening. We congratulated him and complimented on him. And uh, that evening, uh, the good Lord decided that it was time to take Joe home with him, and uh, he passed on. A tremendous shock to uh, all of us in Oshkosh, and uh, I, I particularly felt uh, a loss because I had known him quite well. And I moved to Ashland uh, that next year, and as uh, Mr. Wax and I were sitting and talking about uh, the employees in the store, and he said, in, uh, in our men's department, we have Hilda Feeble. She came up from Oshkosh, and I said, Hilda Feeble? Uh, related to Joe? <laughs> yes, yeah, his wife. And she's here, and for 25 years, Hilda and I have shared the men's department, and uh, I didn't know Hilda in Oshkosh. She was a a home person. Joe was out on the job and she stayed at home and wasn't, I didn't know her, but held her 25 years, but uh, tremendous fun. Uh, uh, she wasn't one of those that broke me into the drinking pit at the uh, uh, office uh, bar, but uh, that's all right. I, she had to have one bite or two. But, uh, <laughs> over, the, over the years, uh, Hilda has been our, our real mainstay in the men's department. Um, she did everything, and uh, these last couple days when uh, uh, we had a little fun down at the store and had some coffee and cake and uh, bars and all those good things, uh, uh, the people that were in and talked to Hilda and commented to me about how they were going to miss her uh, in that men's department. 
then she is going to be missed. And uh, uh, we're going to miss Hilda. Uh, Hilda is going to be there, uh, but she's not going to be in that men's apartment anymore. And uh, uh, Hilda, we, we wish you the very, very super best uh, in your retirement, and you've earned it. And uh, I know Hilda really would like to keep working, and maybe one day she will uh, somewhat. But uh, Hilda, we have a little token of appreciation from all of us to you for uh, being you and being Miss Penny Ashland, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
Now, you, you want me to hold this, or are you going to do all right? <laughs> Just act like we're all a bunch of dumb people buying shoes, and you're going to tell us what to do. I've been so brave till now. I don't know if I can handle it. Just smile. Just smile. Go. Go. Just smile. He's been so great to me. Y'all know that. Who am I going to have? It's all true now. Hey, everybody, you got him right here. Come on. <laughs> you know I love you all. And I'm going to be a pest at the store. <laughs> yeah, we know that. And that's why I'm leaving. <laughs> Say, but I, I have enjoyed it all these years. I, I just really have, and you know that. Thank you very much. Shell, but I think it's been in the papers uh, so many times. But uh, uh, Marianne and uh, Hilder, Hilder had over the 25. I guess if we'd have gone back and, and tried to, she probably put in almost close to 25 years too. But 30 almost. Almost 30. <laughs> when you were only 14 when you started. <laughs> But anyway, uh, both long time, long time associates, uh, they're both going to be, yes, we did shed a tear a few on occasion, but uh, uh, we came through it fine, and we're just one great happy family, and thank you for being a part of that. Thank you. This is on behalf of all your associates. We thank you much for all the help that you've given us, and all the fun we had, and all the parties we've had. <laughs> I told uh, uh, Mike Burstett, uh, by the way, if you did not know, um, his name is Mike Burstett, coming on in. He's about, uh, I think, 38 years old, uh, has a, I think it's two boys, 10 and 12, or 12 and 14, something like that, and uh, he's, he's a real fine young man, and if he's going to do well in our store, I told him not to look at the expense account for the next two months, because it's going to be bigger than the national debt. <laughs>
I can remember on the cold days of winter, Dad and I would go to the store to make sure the mannequins were cold. <laughs> From the moment Dad told me that we were going to the store to check out something, fear had hit my body. The ride down to the store seemed to last forever, and I would have had to walk it down the other road. I was <laughs> <laughs> days. Well, Dad would flip a switch here and there, and the monster's eyes would light up. <laughs> At the same time, it would start to growl. Then, as if it would help, I stood behind the steel doors and prayed, as only a little boy can pray, Please, God, don't blow up my dad. <laughs> <laughs> to drag the fear out even more, Dad wanted me to sit on the I used to think he did. Anyway, once the light went off and the bar stopped beating my finger, that particular day, he told I'd like to thank you again for letting me take some time to raise the hand and achieve that goal. I can only hope that when I retire, I can look back on my life and be as proud of myself as I can today. As in the saying, have your cake and eat it too? Dad. Two words that truly express my feelings towards my father at this very special time. The uh, constant and uh, close rapport that Andy has with the local chamber of commerce and the retail <laughs> board. <laughs> <laughs> In city proportion. It's going to be uh, going to be very hard for. Uh, Michael to be able to keep up the uh, standard that Andy has sent on sending in all of the contest forms and the reports on time. <laughs> and uh, Andy was probably the only guy that uh, Dallas, uh, Dallas probably had a program that they could push a button and their uh, the buyers could call Andy's store directly. <laughs> Nobody else gave them as many calls as they did. I would uh, also, I'd like to, to uh, you know, I don't want anybody to feel bad for Andy. You know, Andy's retiring. And I'm sure he set up a, quite an estate for himself, so he'll be, he'll be comfortable <laughs> down in Plymouth. And uh, the main part of his estate, I was, I was looking over some stuff here, and I saw, you know, their daughter lives down in Texas. And I noticed that the AT&T stock that Andy bought into when his daughter moved down there has went up considerably <laughs> after <laughs> that. <laughs> and phone bills that have yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got that right, Joe. <laughs> it dropped under 300 one month. They called me and said, what's ready, man? <laughs> for the country club dues. <laughs> well, there was a note here. I, I did call uh, AT&T, and they stated that the... I tried to get them to give me their phone bill over the last several years. And they said that the 20% savings that you re would receive from the calls going from Plymouth to Texas rather than from Ashland would cover your country club dues and enough gas to make three trips to Dallas. <laughs> 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 Now, if you would all turn to your books, I'd like to just kind of go over a little history of, of Wally. As, uh, well, number one Main Street merchant, Shavonigan Center, downtown Nashville. Right on. <laughs> For all of you that have called him Andrew or Alan, tonight we'll call him Wally. <laughs> and he, was, he was born on March 22nd, 1930. And he is the eldest of three boys and one sister. As the eldest, Andy took many undeserved punishments. One time he was punished because his sister ate a light bulb. Yeah, I pulled it out of my truck. <laughs> <laughs> and Andy, with his warm heart, uh, supposedly, Andy had a love for pets. <laughs> this reminds me of a story of this guy that had a lot of fun. Like, James, if I get mixed up here, you correct me on this. He supposedly had a dog, and he kept it 10 miles out in the country, as he could, as he could not have one at home. So he would walk or run the 10 miles a day to see it. And that's probably the story he told James about as far as he had to go to school. Just <laughs> a half a block. Uh, also,
So I, I think this is really interesting that's just in here. The next one, it says, uh, Mr. A was a fantastic drummer. He even played in the dance, and the band has been drumming up business ever since. <laughs> and I'll tell you, if anybody knows Andy, he has been drumming up business. Uh, Andy was a fine actor. He did a lot of acting in the high school and the community plays. One time, all he had to do was walk on stage, pick up a suitcase, and leave. Guess what? Somebody nailed the suitcase to the floor. Remember it well. Remember it well. <laughs> then there was those mysterious accidents that happened. Like when the house, when the houses are jumping out onto the streets, or the time he was trapped in the fruit cellar, all we got from that was a cut on the knee. It almost seems as though he was the, in the wine cellar before he got in the fruit cellar. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that house just jumped out there and ran away. That was it, right? Kind of ran right into it. Yeah. Uh, as, uh, as all good penny people tell you, one always starts in the stock room, and that is the honest to God truth. Andy, <laughs> well, he started in 1944 in the cellar. <laughs> He's been really trying to pick himself up ever since. <laughs> then he moved to uh, up to the shoes and later to men. While he's back in the cellar again, this time it's been. <laughs> You know, for, for those of you that don't get to look at all of the analysis and everything, uh, I, I, like you said, the kid's been here five years. It took me four years to understand what Andy was really trying to show me how to do, and I guess I accomplished that in the last year. <laughs> but uh, when you talk about Andy and, and you talk about merchandise and, and especially when you talk about shoes, Andy has set a standard within this region and probably within the company. Uh, we change so many times uh, entities and merchandise within the store. And if there was ever a store that probably helped our store and probably several hundred stores our size be able to keep shoes, it was Ashland, Wisconsin. Through what Andy did in buying shoes, he said a percentage of 20% of the store sales would be in shoes. And there was a time when, when all of our stores, whether it was Ironwood or Ashland, Superior, et cetera, et cetera, without the efforts of people like Ann, uh, Andy and, and um, Marianne, all, well, I was going to say all of them in the shoe department, but Marianne, have these 300 stores, we would not probably have the extra $250,000 in sales in each one of those without the efforts that all of these people put into it naturally. So I do thank them for that because we've learned over the years. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, I'm going to the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> First time I've ever heard say thank you. <laughs> to me. Going, going to the juicy stuff here, I can see in this face. Well, working diligent, <laughs> well, working diligently, he meets that doll Lois between the sheets in the peace goods department. That's all right. <laughs> we think Lois was heading, was heading for the blankets. <laughs> After the shocking meeting, he decided in 1951 to join the service. He became engaged to this doll at Christmas time and returned to the to clinch the deal in 1953. The story is they still have those same sheets and blankets. They're <laughs> big and that big and the luckiest day of your life. Uh, Wally and Lois built their first home in Sheboygan in 1954, the year I was born. He had, he had both thumbs replaced at the end of the project. Lefties, lefties need all the help they can get. <laughs> They arrived on the scene in 1954 in the land in 1956. Building new homes seems to have something to do with having more kids. In 1957, he was transferred to Kibbing, Minnesota. And of course, the winters there had to be a minus 45 degrees, but the boys found a great way to heat things up with sales. 
And I'll tell you, that picture says it all. <coughs> you get up in northern Minnesota, coming from that area, and when you wake up to that 45 below morning, it takes about 25 miles at about 45 miles an hour before the tires become round. <laughs> You're a square person. Okay, uh, okay, I guess. During this 20 months of having working with uh, the manager, Pat uh, Simonich, the boys acquired a favorite pastime of uh, standing on the balcony watching the chicks come through the front door. You see, with the sunlight behind them, it was as if the ladies were wearing see-through dresses. The temperature really went up then. In fact, we had all the balconies to look down. In 1959, Lolly transferred to Beaver Dam for 24 months. There he worked for Gene Everson, manager. Then it was on to Oshkosh from 1961 to 66. The Oshkosh store had an escalator of Mr. A spent his time plucking off all the little monsters while their mothers were shopping. Peter was born in 1964 and Paul arrived in 1965. Tom Harris was the manager at Oshkosh. He became very ill. Lolly took over and had a carpet sale. As usual, nothing ever gets ordered as normal. Lolly ordered enough rag rugs to fill the store up to the ceiling, and probably the parking lot. Right. Mr. Harris almost had a stroke, but Lolly came through selling, smelling like a rose as all of the rugs sold. Sure Story of his life. <laughs> In 1966, Mr. Anderson hit the Ashland scene where he became a great do-it-yourself plumber. They had to put down a new floor. This was done just in time for the plumber to repair a leak. However, that night it leaked all over the new floor. Plumbed well, I guess. Clint came in 1966 and James in 1971. And this ended Lolly's plumbing career. <laughs> <laughs> As always, your friends at J.C. Penney Company in Asheville, Wisconsin, 606-4. I, I, it's not over yet. Oh, I'm going to tweet. I promised my associates I would, would give one present out to Andy Wolf. Would you come? They, they kept coming up, and the, gore, the girls in our store and the guys love Andy as, as, as much as they've ever loved anybody they've worked for or been associated with. And they asked me, what was unique? about Mr. Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it was funny because two or three different associates came to me and, and I, as I said it, I, you know, I thought I was saying it, you know, in a serious, nice way. It may not come out that way tonight, but it was said in a, in a very sincere way. And I said, I think the neatest thing that I've, I've learned from Andy was that Andy was probably the last of what they call a ragman. <laughs> Jim knows this, what I'm talking about here, and I think Jerry knows. And these were guys that when merchandise came in the store, they could touch it, they could feel it, they could smell it, and they would know that it would sell. They knew how many would be ordered. It's just like the rugs that we talked about in Oshkosh, where you could fill it to the ceiling and it would sell. Nowadays, everybody runs to the computer, punches in a number, and it tells you if it sells or not. But it has to have a history. These guys didn't need a history. They would look at it, and they knew if they had to order more when it came in. To, to my disbelief, this is how I told it to the girls, and they asked me to give you this shirt. We carry this in Subdivision 560, Andy? Yeah. 560? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> On the front, it says, Free and easy. <laughs> and I, 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 I'll let you read the back, Andy, because I'm not going to... I'm going to read the back. You're going to read the back. You can hold it. You can hold it. I'll, I'll hold it. The last of the ragman still knows how to feel it, touch it, and smell it. <laughs> I don't know how the girls do it. I would really like, I, I've given Andy a, a letter and, and Lois on, the, on my thoughts about them. And I would just like to say that I guess the past five years for me has been a real growing period and I want to thank Andy for helping me grow at that time both personally and, and family-wise. You people had the enjoyment of working with probably one of the finest 
penny managers I've ever known. And if I can just live up to 80% of what this guy's been, I know I'll have a successful career. So Andy and Lois, as Marla and I said to you, we wish that the next years that you have in front of you are the best years you've ever had. Thank you for being a part of us. Join the 